Good afternoon, mga mahal, my fellow gods, beloved. Come, join me again in reading God's word here in this nice place. Really, greenery. It is so nice, and this ta this place here, shady. I like it here because look, the white flowers came from this tree and it's so nice to see such beautiful white flowers reminds me of purity and uh, hallelujah god's love <laughs> so pure and so true so nice hallelujah oh thank you lord for this wonderful place father we praise you lord and we glorify you oh god you're worthy of glory and honor and praise father it's so, so good it's so wonderful lord it's so awesome hallelujah god we bless the lord and we glorify your father yes lord you are the first and the last the beginning and the end the alpha and the omega hallelujah yes father he was the first, oh yes. He was the last, hallelujah. He was the dead, but he came to life. He was the Alpha and the Omega, who live and die and live forevermore. He knows our works, let's be in faithful. He knows our poverty, we should endure. He knows our tribulation, we should not fear. For no servant is greater than his master. Yes, Father. There's no servant is greater than his master. Who was near, let him hear. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcome receive eternal life, and he who is faithful receive the crown of life. Yes, Father, as we are faithful to you, Lord, yes, we will receive the crown of life. The crown of rejoicing, the incorruptible crown, the crown of glory. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we praise the Lord and we glorify you, O God. You are worthy of glory and honor and praise, Father. You're so, so good. You're so wonderful. You're so awesome. God, we glorify you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Jesus the name above all names hallelujah come mga mahal let's continue on reading god's word in the book of deuteronomy chapter um you see now it is actually chapter 14 hallelujah yesterday we just finished reading 13 and uh, I mean 14 and today we will continue on reading chapter 14 verses 22 because yesterday we just read until 21 Father God as we read your word help us to understand O Lord give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of your Father God as we read your word in Jesus mighty name the name above all names we pray Amen and Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verses 22 and maybe until 15. Chapter 15. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, thank you. We magnify your Lord and we glorify your Father. The giving of tithes. You must set aside a tithe of your crops, one tenth 
of all the crops you harvest each year. Bring this tithe to the designated place of worship, the place the Lord your God chooses for his name to be honored, and eat it there in his presence. This applies to your firstborn males of your flocks and herds. Doing this will teach you all always to fear the Lord your God. Now, when the Lord your God blesses you with a good harvest, the place of worship, He He chooses for his name to be honored might be too far for you to bring the tithe. If so, you may sell the tithe portion of your crops and herds, but the money in a pouch and go to the place the Lord your God has chosen. When you arrive, you may use the money to buy any kind of food you want, cattle, sheep, goats, wine, or other alcoholic drink. Then feast there in the presence of the Lord your God and celebrate with your household. And do not neglect the Levites in your town, for they will receive no allotment of, your, of land among you. At the end of every year, at the end of every third year, bring the entire tithe of that year's harvest and store it in the nearest town. Give it to the Levites who will receive no allotment of land among you, as well as to the foreigners living among you, the orphans and the widows in your towns, so they can eat and be satisfied. Then the Lord your God will bless you in all your work. Release for debtors. At the end of every seventh year, you must cancel the debts of everyone who owes you money. This is how it must be done. Everyone must cancel the loans they have made to their fellow Israelites. They must not demand payment from their neighbors or relatives for the Lord's time of release has arrived. This release from debt, however, applies only to your fellow Israelites, not to the foreigners living among you. They should have no poor among you, for the Lord your God will greatly bless you in the land he is giving you as a special position. You will receive this blessing if you are carefully to obey all commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you today. The Lord your God will bless you as he has promised. You will lend money to many nations but will never need to borrow. You will rule many nations but they will not rule over you. But if there are any poor Israelites in your towns, when you arrive in the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not be hard-hearted or tight tight-fisted toward them. Instead, be generous and lend them whatever they need. Do not be mean-spirited and refuse someone alone because the year for cancelling debts is close at hand. If you refuse to make the loan and the needy person cries out to the Lord, you will be considered guilty of sin. Give generously to the poor, not grudgingly, for the Lord your God will bless you in everything you do. There will, be, there will always be some in the land who are poor. That is why I command you to share freely with the poor and with other Israelites in need. Mm. We should share with the poor. Release the Hebrew. Hebrews, Hebrew slaves. If a fellow Hebrew sells himself or herself to be your servant and serves you for six years, 
in the seventh year, you must set that servant free. When you release a male servant, do not send him away empty-handed. Give him a generous farewell gift from your flock, your threshing floor, and your wine press. Share with him some of the bounty with which the Lord your God has blessed you. Remember that you were once slaves in the land of Egypt and the land your God redeemed you. That is why I am giving you this command. But suppose your servant says, I will not leave you because he loves you and your family and he has done well with you. In that case, take an owl, 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 what is it? I don't know how to write And push it through his eager lobe, ear lobe into the door. After that, he will be your servant for life and do the same for your female servants. You must not consider it a hardship when you release your servants. Remember that for six years, they have given you services worth double the wages of hired workers, and the Lord your God will bless you in all you do, sacrificing firstborn and male animals. You must set aside for the Lord your God all the firstborn males from your flocks and herds. Do not use the firstborn of your herds to work your fields. Do not share the firstborn of your flocks. Instead, you and your family must eat these animals in the presence of the Lord your God each year at the place he chooses. But if this firstborn animal has any defect, such as lameness or blindness, or if anything else is wrong with it, you must not sacrifice it to the Lord your God. You must not sacrifice it to the Lord your God. Instead, use it for food for your family in your, in your hometown. Anyone whether ceremonially clean or unclean may eat it, just as anyone may eat a gazelle or deer. But you must not consume the blood. You must pour it out on the ground like water. Chapter 16. Let's carry on reading. Passover and the Festival of Unleavened Bread In honor of the Lord your God, celebrate the Passover each year in the early spring in the month of Abib. For that was the month in which the Lord your God brought you out of Egypt at, by night. Your Passover sacrifices may be from either the flock of the herd and it must be sacrificed on the Lord your God at the designated place of worship, the place he chooses for his name to be honored. Eat with bread made without yeast for seven days. The bread you eat must be made without yeast as when you escape from the Egypt in such a hurry. Eat this bread, the bread of suffering, so that as long as you live you will remember the day you departed from Egypt. Let no yeast be found in any house throughout your land for these seven days. And when you sacrifice the Passover lamb on the evening of the first day, do not let any of the meats remain until the next morning. You may not sacrifice the Passover in just any of the towns that the Lord your God is giving you. You must offer it only at the designated place of worship, the place the Lord your God chooses for his name to be honored. Sacrifice it there in the evening as the sun goes down on the anniversary of your exodus from Egypt. Roast the lamb and eat it in the place of the Lord your God chooses. Then you may go back to your tents the next morning. For the next six days, you may not eat any bread made with yeast. On the seventh day, 
proclaim another holiday in honor of the Lord your God, and no work may be done on that day. The Festival of Harvest Count of seven weeks from when the first began to cut the grain at the first at the time of harvest. Then celebrate the festival of harvest to honor the Lord your God. Bring him a voluntary offering in proportion to the blessings you have received from him. This is a time to celebrate before the Lord your God at the designated place of worship he will choose for his name to be honored. Celebrate with your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, the Levites from, from your towns, and the foreigners, orphans, and widows who live among you. Remember that you were once slaves in Egypt, so be careful to obey all these decrees. The Festival of Sh Shelters You must observe the Festival of Shelters, Shelters for seven days at the end of the harvest season. After the grain has been threshed and the grapes have been pressed, this festival will be ha a happy time of celebrating with your sons and daughters, your male and female servants and the Levites, foreigners, orphans, and widows from your towns for seven days. You must celebrate this festival to honor the Lord your God at the place he chooses. For it is he who blesses you with bountiful harvests and gives you success in all your work. This festival, okay, this festival will be a time of great joy for all. Each year, every man in Israel must celebrate these three festivals. The Festival of Unleavened Bread, the Festival of Harvest, the Festival of Shelters on each of these occasions. All men must appear before the Lord your God at the place he chooses, but they must not appear before the Lord without a gift for him. All must give as they are able according to the blessing given to them by the Lord your God. Mm. Justice for the people Appoint judges and officials for yourselves from each of your tribes in all the towns the Lord your God is giving you. They must judge the people freely. They must judge the people fairly. You must never twist justice or show partiality. Never accept a bribe, for bribes blind the eyes of the wise and corrupt the decisions of the godly. Let true justice prevail, so you may live and occupy the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You must never set up a wooden Asherah, pool beside the altar you build for the Lord your God, and never set up sacred pillars for worship, for the Lord your God hates them. Verse chapter 17, verse 1. Never sacrifice sick or defic defective cattle, sheep, or goats on the Lord your God, for he detests such gifts. When you begin leaving the towns the Lord your God is giving you, a man or woman among you must do a man or woman among you do evil in the sight of the Lord your God and violate the covenant. For instance, they might serve other God or worship the sun, the moon, or any of the stars, the forest of heaven, which I have strictly forbidden. When you hear about it investigates the matter thoroughly. It is true that this detestable, this detestable thing has been done in Israel 
then the man or woman who has committed such an evil act must be taken to the gates of the town and stoned to death. But never put a person to death on the testimony of only one witness. There must always be two or three witnesses. Two witnesses must throw the first stones and then all the people may join in. In this way, you will purge the evil from among you. No. Father God, help us to understand more as we read this from the last covenant. And uh, I, we are so blessed, Lord Jesus, oh God, that uh, Jesus redeemed us from the works of the law. And hallelujah, we are saved by grace. Oh, we praise you, Lord, and we glorify you, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity for me to be able to read, Lord Jesus, oh God, the word of God and uh, what's happening during the uh, day of Moses in the Old Testament. Hallelujah. And we are so blessed now that Jesus redeemed us from the law. Hallelujah. And we live by the Spirit of the living God in us. Lord, continue to bless us and help us to understand as we read your word from the Old Covenant to the New Covenant. Lord, we want to read more because we want to learn about what happened during the Old Covenant days with, in the, with Moses. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We bless you, Lord, and we glorify you, O oh God. You are worthy of glory and honor and praise. Father, thank you for this time and opportunity for me to be able to read God's word in this nice place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, mga mahal, for reading God's love letter with me. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And always remember that Jesus loves you. Good na uh, goodbye, good afternoon, God bless, and take care. Let's read again tomorrow. Bye, God bless.